Hello everyone. I was just gonna throw together a quick video on a vise that I got. This is an M-Lock work holding uh, M-Lock 125 slim. So it's a scaled down version of their 125, which uh, seems to be about a perfect fit for machines in this class, like the Style X7. Um, and I'd imagine there's many others that probably the Skyfires and stuff like that, that this would be a great fit for. Um, <clears throat> This vise is a little different, so some people I know wanted a quick video on how it, how it works. Uh, the vise uses these serrated racks to set the general position of the mobile jaw, and then also you'll see the fixed jaw as well. So when you're, you know, repeating a part, you set it once like this, and then to release it, you release the pressure on this wedge, and then you can change your part out, and then retighten it. Uh, between parts, to readjust the, the jaw, you loosen this guy, and then you can readjust it like so. It's pretty simple. Um, and uh, there were some concerns maybe about the repeatability of these racks. So this guy, the fixed jaw, uh, can also adjust on these um, for whatever reason you may want to do that. And then even more important, uh, this can completely reverse, so you can flip it around on the racks. Uh, so I've got some testing videos on how that went. And I mean, essentially testing, I set the vise to this ground face, and there's about, I don't even know if there's a tenth of deviation across here, uh, which some of that could have been just the way I aligned the vise. And uh, then what I did is I loosened it, moved it to the other end of the rack, tightened it, I did not you know try a bunch of times to get the best reading I could just move it tighten it measure it again and I want to say the most it seemed to ever deviate when I do that is about maybe one and a half tenths um, and then even more interestingly then I flipped the jaw around and measured it then the ground jaw on the back side and a same result you know it was about maybe a maximum you know a, a tenth and a half of um, of deviation between all three of those <clears throat> positions which I mean I'm pretty excited about obviously you know there's some some concern when you got you know when you're using the vise and this is all full of chips you know you're gonna blow it off and do whatever you got to do to to move it but um, that's something I'll be following up on is you know how how it adjusts once it's actually in use um, just by the feel of everything and the sense I'm getting of it all, I don't really think there's going to be much of an issue. And like I said, mo this jaw, normally it's not an option on a vise to move where this is. So it's a it's an additional bonus feature that you can move it, you can flip it, do all that stuff without having to realign your vise. It is, you know, I, I, I'm sure that 99.99% .99 of you, just like me, um, you know, within a tenth is pretty incredible and... It exceeds the requirements for most anything I'm going to do. And then, same with this. Uh, obviously, it's less critical, I guess, if, if these jaws down here get a bit of full, full of stuff or whatever. Um, because this is going to square up against the, the fixed jaw. So anyway, I'm, I'm happy with how this is working. And like I said, the fit on my machine uh, is perfect. I looked at other options like the orange and all that kind of stuff. And... You know, the, the one problem I noticed on the orange is the fixed jaw comes way down into the machine because the, the one critical dimension, if you've got this machine, is from the back side of the vise to the Z cover when it's all down and stacked up. Uh, this is your limiting factor right there. So I've got this set where this is on the table right now is about 10 millimeters of clearance, just in case some chips or whatever got stuck back there. Uh, so you can see... It's just inside the, the travel boundary of the machine, so you'll be able to sneak around with a tool around on top of the uh, part. And, I mean, if I have to get around with a much larger tool, well, I just move the fixed jaw and carry on. I don't even have to redial anything in. So, I've got some videos. Like I said, I'll show it first just what I, how I zeroed the vise on here. Then I move it. And check it again with no tries, repeats. It was the first time I tightened it down. Uh, and show you what that looks like. And then I flip the jaw, show you what that looks like. And then I also test the flatness. 
across all the way down here. And that's really the first time I've been able to test the flatness of the machine itself because I, I didn't have anything I could put across here to test that. So, you know, pretty amazing in my opinion uh, for this class of machine. You'll see it really is quite bumpy as I'm jogging it around through here. It's really kind of hard to follow the indicator, but you'll get the, the general sense that I did, you know, if you're erring on the side of it reading better, you'd pretty easily say it's probably about a tenth of deviation across that distance. And at worst, you know, one and a half would be, uh, or even two, depending on how you interpret the needle. Whenever you change direction on the indicator, you'll see it jumps about a tenth. So then after it, you change direction and it jumps, then follow it all the way down the length. So, you know, try and not read into the, the jump as you change direction, because that's just the indicator loading up a different way. Uh, so yeah, that was a good testament to the machine. And then of course also to the vise, because that's the total combined error between the two. So essentially they're both, in my opinion, perfect. Um, I'm not sure how much money you have to pay to get better than a tenth of flatness, uh, but I, that's outside of my realm. So uh, now I'll just splice in those testing videos and that's about it for now. Like I said, I will follow up with uh, my experience with it when this thing gets dirty and after some use. And yeah, so that's it for now. Enjoy those uh, quick indicator videos and yeah, talk to you later.